Hey everybody, and uh, welcome back. So in this part of the tutorial, what we're going to be doing is uh, working with some of the working with the uh, the interop. So we can go ahead and send files back and forth from Stingray and um, to Maya, and we can make some edits. And I just wanted to show you the process of using the interop tools, since that is technically part of workflow. And uh, some people really like to use this method. Um, so I wanted to just really quickly go through just some of the basics of how to make this stuff work. Um, it's, uh, it's really powerful and it can be really convenient sometimes. Um, so I just thought, you know, why not, why not show this off too? So, um, so the first thing is you're going to need to have the interop tools set up. Okay. And to do that, um, what you're going to have to do is install them. So, uh, on my desktop here, I have gone ahead and made a, uh, little, uh, shortcut to my Stingray root folder. On your computer, you would have to find the Stingray root. Um, it's probably in your applications folder, but uh, you're just gonna have to find out wherever Stingray was installed to, and then go to that folder. And then once inside there, you'll see this DCC link folder. Uh, I'm sorry, not in the DCC link folder, in the extras folder. And you're gonna double click this installer right here, and it'll find your Maya or Max and uh, go ahead and install it and um, you'll, be, you'll be pretty much good to go, okay? Uh, so you're just gonna double click it. I can't do it right now because uh, I already have it installed, but you know, I can do repair, reinstall or whatever, but I'm running it so I don't wanna quit it. But basically you're just gonna, this won't be reinstalled, it'll just say install for you and then you can go ahead and install it, okay? So uh, that's all you would have to do and you'd then have it, okay? So um, that's really basically it. Now, once you have that installed, uh, the next thing you're gonna need to do is enable the plugins. So you would then start up Maya. You will have to quit Maya before you can run that installer. Uh, once it's installed, you can start it up and then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna go Windows and you're gonna go Settings and Preferences and you're gonna jump into the Plugin Manager. And then in this list, you just wanna look for this uh, stingraylink.mll and just say load and auto load, okay? And then you should be good to go, all right? Then you'll notice that you have uh, both the Stingray connect and disconnect, um, and you also have your uh, send to Stingray options from here, okay? So once that's done, you should be set, all right? Um, so now what does that mean? What, is, what does send to Stingray mean and what does you know, uh, you know, the connect mean? So we're gonna go through that. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is launch up your Stingray. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch Stingray and get this running again. And I'm gonna go back into our project. And once it's running, uh, we can go ahead and send this file directly into Stingray. Um, and it should be you know, pretty straightforward and painless. Now notice that, uh, oops, let's go back to Maya really quick. So I just want you to notice that I am using the custom shader again. So uh, even with custom shaders, it works. Um, so, so yeah, so here we go. So now that Stingray is running and I've got my project open uh, to where I want it to be, I can go ahead and just send this file directly to, to, to Stingray. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go File, Send to Stingray, and I'm just gonna do selection. You know what, I'll do all. So I'll go all, and I'm then gonna go into content. Now notice that it automatically found my, my, my folder. So it's already in the project that I'm working in, and then it actually looks inside your content folder. So it actually makes it really easy to, to locate where you wanna go. So then I'm just gonna go into models, I'm gonna go right click, I'm gonna say new folder, and I'm gonna do record player underscore cabinet. Okay, so now I've got my record player underscore cabinet, and I can go ahead and export this. And I'm gonna call it record player underscore cabinet. Okay, and I always do this with an L. I don't know why it always does that to me, but it does. Oop, it's still doing it. P-L-A-Y-E-R. There we go. Record player underscore cabinet. And I can just go ahead and hit export. Now, uh, once it, you'll notice that Stingray will automatically start flashing. So it comes here, and now all you have to do is say what you wanna do. So do I wanna import with animations? Well, this one doesn't have animations, so I'm not gonna import with animations. And I'm just gonna go import. And now notice that it didn't actually update my location. So I will have to go content, models, record player cabinet, 
And here we can find that my record player got imported perfectly, uh, straight from Maya. So everything came in and it's all connected now. So this is right, right there and in. Now, um, if you'll notice that we, it now says that we're connected, okay? So if I were to go ahead and make an update, not something that I'm necessarily gonna wanna keep, but I'm just gonna show you. Um, let's, uh, let's change the location of this guy. So we'll rotate it and, um, hmm, how would I like to do this? So I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just gonna uh, move this into a different position so that this is now out of the way. Uh, rotate and I'm gonna move that position to here. So I've got my, my rotation reset now and I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it down and I'm gonna slide it forward, okay? So that it's not really conflicting anymore, okay? So now that's down and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna go D and I'm just gonna move it to that position and then I can go ahead and hit E for rotate and rotate this guy down, okay? So now it's in the down position. Oops, she just don't wanna go. Okay, good enough. And what we're gonna do now is just send this over again, okay? So we don't even have to send it again. All we have to do is hit this update button. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit update and Stingray should now be updated. So if we look in here, we'll see that Stingray has actually updated itself. Now, that's just an example of what you can do with this tool, but you can take this pretty far. You can make your whole scene in here. So if we wanted to actually add things, like let's say we wanted to add a light, right? So let's go ahead and undo everything that we just did. Put that back the way it was, okay? I do want to put that rotation there though, because that was a good place for that rotation. And let's say we wanted to add a light, so let's go ahead and do so. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go create lights and point light. Or, yeah, point light's good. So we'll put this point light right here and we'll put it right there. And let's go ahead and make the intensity really good and bright. So let's make that something more like, uh, I don't know, 100. And let's say lighting, use all lights. And actually 100 is way over the top, so let's try something more like 10. One, 10 is even over the top, so let's make it like one. Yeah, so one, maybe two. Okay, so now we've got our light doing what it's supposed to do. So our lights uh, are set, and now what we can do is send this over uh, back to Stingray. So let's go ahead and hit the update button. And now we can see that we have light being created uh, right where that light was. So even adding stuff uh, is possible. So we can add, we can remove, we can take stuff out, and the product in here will always stay updated. Okay, so this is really powerful uh, when you're trying to just tweak things and get things really right and where, right where you want them. Um, it's just a very powerful little tool. Uh, so really nice. Now there's one other thing that you can do with the, uh, the Stingray link, um, and that is connect the cameras. So I wanted to show you that too, because it's pretty neat. So let me put that into the scene. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set it to, you know, set to the origin, zero, zero, zero. So it's set to the origin. And now um, what I can do is look at this with my camera, right? And now what happens if I wanna know, you know, let's say this is a big scene and I wanna be able to look at it from a certain angle and then see exactly what I'm looking at in Maya, okay? So what I can do is in Maya, I can actually go Stingray uh, live camera tracking, okay? And now, with live camera tracking, wherever I look, you will see that Stingray will update, okay? So, if we were to put these side by side, um, this works really well with multi-monitors. But this is really good for reviewing your, your models, where you want to make sure that everything uh, looks good in your scene, and where you can make rapid adjustments um, relatively easily to a larger scene. This is really, really helpful in large scenes. Not so much on such small things, but if you had like a, <clears throat> you know, like a big room or something and you had a bunch of objects in it and you, you wanted to look uh, at a very specific part of it and make edits, this can be uh, really quite useful. So I'm just going to close up all this stuff just so I have a little more close proximity. And as you can see, whatever I move to, is going to be updated okay and if we were to set this to update mode always we would actually get it real time 
So wherever I look in here is where it will see it there. And so if we wanted to go the other direction where we're controlling it from, from Stingray, all we have to do is rotate in Stingray, and we'll see that Maya updates as well. So this can be really powerful, um, especially since some of the fly tools in Maya, or I mean in, in Stingray are so good, like you know, trying to navigate into something like here might be really tough in Maya. But um, in Stingray, because we have the WASD easy movement, it can actually be uh, really, really convenient. So there's one last thing that we haven't covered, and that is what if we have a model that we didn't just build in Maya and sent it over to Stingray, right? Like that automatically did our connection for us. But what would happen if we had a model that wasn't already preloaded in Maya and we wanted to be able to do a quick edit to it and use this connection method? Well, luckily we have that tool as well. I'm gonna go uh, new scene rather. And I'm just gonna say don't save. And now I've got a new scene here, okay? So um, if you notice that it already broke the link, okay? And we can say to, Sting, uh, to Maya to disconnect, okay? So now we're fully disconnected and we no longer have our, our camera following itself and we don't really have um, a connection anymore, right? So now let's go ahead and grab our record player, right? So we'll even grab this one with the materials and we'll place that uh, somewhere in our scene. Um, right there might be nice. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. This is just to show off an idea. So we'll drop this record player into here and rotate it around. This is actually where it's intended to go. So I'll make this 180, okay? And I'm gonna just put this guy right where it sits nicely in this cabinet, okay? So, but, the idea is that we're gonna go ahead and show off how we could do a quick edit on this model, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go right click and I'm gonna go find asset in browser, which is gonna find it right here, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, right click and I'm gonna say send to Maya, okay? And in which case it's gonna go ahead, um, do I wanna allow this execution? And I'm gonna say allow, okay? And we're gonna say don't save the scene and do you want to overwrite materials in the scene? Yes. And we will see that the model comes directly into here and the connection gets automatically reestablished. So if I were to go ahead and make a change, like let's say we just moved this record way up, right? We can just go ahead and hit update and say yes. And as you can see, the record has been moved upwards, okay? So again, we can easily swap these files back and forth and uh, rapidly make edits, okay? So if we wanted to move this back down again, uh, we can go ahead and hit update and it updates on the fly, okay? So the same kind of thing. And again, if we wanted to you know, use the live camera tracking, uh, we certainly can uh, do that as well, all right? So, so that's it. So that's gonna cover everything that there is to the, um, to the Stingray interop with my LT. And I hope you, uh, again, found this useful. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section. All right, see you on the next tutorial.